Hello and welcome to another session of Ramblin' Rose. Today I'll be talking to you about forest tent caterpillars. You probably have seen these critters and you've probably called them armyworms, which is really not what they should be called. Forest tent caterpillars have been plentiful in our area the last few years. We've gotten a lot of calls at the plant and pest clinic about them. Despite its name, the forest tent caterpillar doesn't actually make a tent. If you see a tent such as this one, the varmint that in question is probably the eastern tent caterpillar. As I said earlier, sometimes people call forest tent caterpillars army worms. And really, people assume that they're kind of the same thing as a gypsy moth, but they're not. Gypsy moths would actually be scary to see in our area. They are very invasive. And to our knowledge, we don't have these in our area. If you're looking at a forest tent caterpillar, the one way to be sure to what it is, you note the blue and black back, the hairs kind of sticking out on the side. And forest tent caterpillars have very distinct keyhole or shoe prints going down their back. That's how you know it's a forest tent caterpillar. The larvae emerge mid to late May, and they feed for five or six weeks. In years of really bad outbreaks, you can actually hear them chewing, and sorry, but you can actually hear them pooping. The poop, we often get calls that say there's this pepper looking thing sprinkled all over my, my whatever, my patio, my deck, and that's actually forest tent caterpillars. They also, when they're done eating the leaves off of one tree, will swing down on a kind of a string, a film, and will kind of swing and can land on you. It's really quite gross when there's a really bad outbreak. By the end of June, these larvae are much bigger. They can be two to three inches, and they're on the move. Forest tent caterpillars don't bite. They don't harm animals. They do defoliate trees. They eat the leaves of many different kinds of trees, shrubs, some, even some fruit trees. And this damage is not serious unless it happens several years in a row or unless there's already some stress factor, such as drought. They do reduce the growth of trees, however, if, if, uh, if there's a severe outbreak. So really tolerate them as much as possible, unless it's a really, really bad outbreak. There are natural controls for these predators. Bears, birds, rodents, a lot of different things will eat forest tent caterpillars. Weather conditions can be a, a natural control. If we have a very cool spring, it really cuts down on their population. Um, also, there are diseases and starvation if they get to be overpopulating an area. In addition, there's a parasit parasitizing non-stinging wasps and flies. One par predator of forest tent caterpillar that you probably have seen the last couple of years is a friendly fly. It looks like a really big house fly with kind of reddish eyes. And when you try to shake it off, it doesn't. It just kind of stays on you. Uh, and they don't bite, by the way. But we like to see the friendly flies because they're the ones that are eating a lot of the forest tent caterpillars. The best control for forest caterpillars are when they're small, a half inch or so. You can do some uh, controls yourself without chemicals by um, squishing them if you see them. Again, sorry it's gross, but um, they do tend to gather in groups, like on the side of a building or on the side of a tree. Um, and so you can knock them down or, or squish them, as I said. Uh, they do kind of stain, so you don't really want to squish them on your house. If you choose to spray something, spray something labeled for that. Um, there are a variety of insects, insecticides and chemical controls you can use. Um, the DNR can help you decide uh, whether to spray BT aerially if you have a large outbreak. I wanted to show you some pictures before we go of what they look like because you probably have seen them. When they're in a cocoon, they're kind of yellow fluffy. If you see a yellow fuzzy cocoon with a hole in it, you're too late, they're already gone. Um, while they're in the cocoon, you can take a brush or a broom and squish them, up, get the, sweep them off your eaves and whatever. Um, they do turn into a nondescript moth. The egg masses are, are pretty, um, you can see them, but they're very much smaller than in this picture. They're probably the size of your baby fingernail. Um, and they're re very hard, uh, very tough. You can't squish them. If you want more information about forest tent caterpillars, there are a couple of DNR tip sheets and also from 
uh, the U of M extension that are very good. Uh, or you can call and ask a master gardener. Thanks.